Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the January 2024 um, Statistics S1 International A Level at Excel paper. And this question here, we have this. Um, it's about correlation and regression, I guess, mainly. It says a French test and a Spanish test were sat by 11 students. The table below shows their marks. Greg points were plotted on a scatter diagram then the point 30 90 would be an outlier because 90 is an outlier for the spanish marks an outlier is defined as a value that is greater than the upper quartile plus one time 1.5 times the interquartile range the upper quartile q3 q1 is the low quartile q3 minus q1 is called the interquartile range so it's the upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range or smaller than Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Okay, the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that's the definition of an outlier. So Greg says that 90 is an outlier for Spanish marks. So show that 90 is an outlier for Spanish marks. So we got to show that it's an outlier. Now you got to be very careful here because when we are trying to figure out what the lowest value is, what the median is, what the lower quartile is, and upper quartile is, the numbers have to be in order of size. Okay, normally the numbers will be given order of size. And there's a little trick here because as you can see, the numbers are not in order of size. You can see straight away the 90 is over here and it's the highest value. The 90 should be over there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange the numbers in order of size. Okay, so 16, there's nothing lower than 16, so that's okay. I've used that value. The next lowest, we've got 24. Okay, 24 is the next lowest. 28. Okay, that's the next lowest. 32. That's fine. So 28 and 32 are used now. 36, it looks the rest, it looks like the rest of them are actually in order. 44, 48. Okay, um 48. 36, 38, 44, 48, 48, and 68. Okay, so we have all the numbers now, and they're in order of size. Now we can determine what the outlier is. So we need to find the values of Q1 and Q3 for us to be able to find the, um, the limits for the outliers. So Q1 is the lower quartile, which is the number, which is... 25% or one quarter along the entries. Okay, so it's 25% along the entries. So we take the number of entries, which is 11. We divide it by 4. Now, 11 by, divided by 4 gives us 2.75. Okay, so there's many ways of finding the outliers, but the easiest, simplest way is just using the method that I'm going to show you now where if it whatever number comes out so to find the quartile sorry so the low quartile the position of it n over 4 is given by 2.75 now this is discrete individual data that we know all the values of so we have to round this up to the next number so we're looking for the third entry so the third entry is going to be q1 so q1 is the third entry which is 28 and the upper quartile is 3 n over 4 so 3 times 11 over 4 so it's going to be 3 times this number here which gives us 33 over 4 which is 8.25 so we always round up to the next term always so the 8.25 rounds up to 9 so you have the ninth entry so we've got to find what the ninth entry is well that's the 11th 10th 9th so that's going to be q3 which is going to be 48 okay 11 10 9 Okay, so the, the lower quartile is 28, the upper quartile is 48. So we can say now that we want to show that 90 is an outlier for the Spanish marks. So we're going to say that the uh, limit, the upper limit, the upper limit is equal to the upper quartile, which is 48, plus 1.5 times interquartile range, which is 48 minus 28. So it's 48 plus... 1.5 times 20, um, 
So 1.5 times 20 is going to give us 30, which gives you 78. Okay. So you have uh, 48 plus 1.5 times 48 minus 28 gives you 78. So this is the upper limit. So, okay, 90 is greater than 78, which is the upper limit. Therefore, 90 is an outlier. Okay, it, it lies outside of the range of the highest value that you can have for the outlier. So then it says, ignoring the point 3060, Greg calculated the following summary statistics. So this is based on 10 students taking out this point here. This point has been removed. Okay, so this point was removed from the uh, mark. So this, this, this entry is gone. Okay, and this entry 30 is gone. All right. So we got the summary statistics now to show that the equation of the least squares regression line of S uh, of on F for the remaining 10 students is. So we're going to use those to show that this is the equation of the regression line. So basically what it is, when you, when you plot these points, excluding point B, and you draw your line of best fit, or you find your equation of line, uh, line of best fit, this is what the equation is going to be. So we have to go back to our formula sheet and look at the information we need to know about how to find the equation of the regression line. So if we go back to our go back to our formula sheet, we go down, we see here we have this little section here. It says the regression coefficient of y on x is b, which is equal to this. Okay, and the least squares regression line of y and x is given by this. So we need this section here to help us. So I'm going to take this section and we'll come back to see if we need more than this. Okay, so I'm just going to paste this down here and then we're going to use this to find what we need. So the regression coefficient of y and x is b equals sxy over sxx. Okay, let's just... Um, okay, um, so we need these things. So first of all, we have s on f. So this is y on x. So s on f, all right, that's what we have. So for us, b would be, okay, s, SF, okay, SSF or FS, same thing. It would be this, okay, SFS over um, S double F. Okay, that's what if you if you translate this in terms of the letter that we are dealing with, we're we're finding the 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 regression line of S on F. This is Y on X. So the Y and the S are the the S takes the place of the Y and the F takes the place of the X. Okay, so this will help me to find B. And then it says that the least squares regression line of Y on X is Y equals A plus BX. So remember, our Y is S, so it's S equals A plus B times F. Okay, so we have S equals A plus B times F. All right, and we know that um, A is equal to, A is equal to the mean of Y, Okay, so remember y is s, so it's the mean of s minus b times the mean of f. So this is going to be the mean of s minus b times the mean of f. Okay, so I've just translated it according to our letters that we need. So if we are able now to find b, then we can find a, and then we can find the equation of the regression line. So b is simply s f s over s double f, which we have both of them here. So it's 1,735.6 over 1,667.6. Okay, that's the value of B. And the value of A, therefore, is a mean of S. Now, S, remember there's 10 entries, and the mean of S is going to be, the mean of S is going to be the sum of S over the number of entries. Same with the mean of f, it's going to be the sum of f over the number of entries. So we're going to have a is equal to, as we can see from this formula here, the mean of s. The mean of s is going to be um, 382 over 10. Okay, minus b times, which is this, 1735.6, okay, over 
0.6 times the mean of f the mean of f is going to be 422 over 10 so this will give me my value of a so we can have our values of a and b and once we've got those we can write down the equation okay so let's first of all find what b is okay so we have 1735.6 over 1667.6 i put too many sixes there sorry that's better that gives us 1.04 which is good that's what we're looking for good says so 1.0407 i'll i'll round it at the end okay and a therefore is going to be this value that we've got i'm just going to use this i'm going to use this this is the last answer so i'm going to put this is going to be 38.2 38.2 because it's divided by 10 minus the last answer we got times and this is going to be um i didn't write it down very well what's that 422 point 42.2 divide that by 10 42.2 okay and that gives us minus 5.72 which is good that's exactly what we're looking for so minus 5.7207 minus 5.702 7 sorry 7207 minus 5.7207 continues on so therefore we can say that the equation of the line of best fit s equals a which is minus 5.72 to 3sf okay plus uh, 1.04 to 3sf 1.04 okay that's 3sf times f which is exactly what we were looking for okay so there's the answer for part b all right so we gave everything to 3sf so this is the gradient this is the wine sips you could say all right so there's part b done now for part c it says give an interpretation of the gradient of the regression line so the gradient is this part here, B, 1.04. So what would this mean? The gradient is the change in Y over the change in X. Okay, so the Y would be the S and the X would be the F. Okay, so the gradient means, okay, the gradient would be the change in Y, which is the change in S over the change in F. Okay, so we can say that this 1.04 over 1 is, you can say, the change in S over... The change in f so you can say as um the french marks increase as the french well for every one mark increase in french marks okay we can put word it a bit better for every for every one mark increase in french marks the spanish marks the spanish marks increase by 1.04 marks okay that's what that means the change in y over the change in x so you can say 1.04 over 1 so as you increase the french marks by 1 the spanish marks increase by 1.04 that's a good interpretation of the gradient of the regression line okay then it says two further students sat the french test but they missed the spanish test use the equation given in part b estimate one a spat the spanish mark for the student who scored 55 marks in the french test so the spanish mark for the one that scored 55 in the french you can just replace the f with 55 so minus 5.72 plus 1.04 times 55 okay so that gives you simple as that just put that in the equation minus 5.7 whoops minus 5.72 plus 1.04 times 55 that gives you 51.48 uh, 51.48 marks okay you can say 51.5 if you want okay and for part two a Spanish mark for the student who scores 18 marks. So it's 18 
again same same exact procedure just replace the mark for uh, the uh, French mark which was 18 in the equation instead of F so we get exactly the same kind of procedure we just have to just replace this with 18 and you get an estimate which is 13 13 marks so you get 13 okay so there's part one and part two um, that's question part D and then it says E state giving a reason which of the two estimates found in part D would be the more reliable estimate so if we go back to our original data okay and we look to see um, the range of values of our um, marks for French okay these are the marks we put in here okay so we go back to the French marks we see that the lowest French mark is 24 and the highest French mark is 68. Okay, so we can say that the French marks range, we can say the range of French marks, the range of marks in French are from 24 to 68. Just make sure of that. 24. This is 68. Those ones are all in order, it seems. Okay. So we can see for part one, okay, 51.48 is within, is within our range of marks. Okay. Therefore, we can say it's interpolation. Okay. It's interpolation. Therefore, reliable okay and number two we have the number 18 okay is not within our range for french marks it's outside of the range it's below that so it's not within this range so basically to get the mark the, to use that estimate to use that in the in the regression line we are doing what's called extrapolation okay which is unreliable okay so we can say therefore we can say the um the, the first estimate the estimate in part one estimate in part one is more reliable because we're interpolating and we are not, we are not extrapolating extrapolating okay we're, we're sticking to the data that we have in you know the the range that we have of our data we're not going outside of that range all right so there's the answer to question four and that completes question four uh, from this paper other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here at the end of the video other questions from the topic of um i guess this is regression and correlation can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video here which will tell you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.